Now, we have a really interesting report coming from AMD. Their second quarterly 2022 financial results are out. And they are once again still hitting records for quarterly revenue. This time of $6.6 .6 billion, and they grew 70% year over year. Record quarterly operating cash flow exceeded $1 billion U.S. dollars. So AMD today announced revenue for the second quarter of 2022 of $6.6 .6 billion, gross margin of 46%, operating income of $526 million, operating margin of 8%, and a net income of $447 million, and diluted earnings per share of $0.27 cents per share. On a non-GAAP basis, gross margin was 54%, operating income was $2 billion, and operating margin was 30%. Net income was $1.7 billion, and diluted earnings per share was $1.05. They say, we delivered our eighth straight quarter of record revenue based on our strong execution and expanded product portfolio, said AMD Chair and CEO Dr. Lisa Su. Each of our segments grew significantly year over year, led by higher sales of our data center and embedded products. We see continued growth in the back half of the year, highlighted by our next generation five nanometer product shipments and supported by our diversified business model. Revenue of $6.6 .6 billion increased 70% year over year. And I still don't exactly understand how that's possible we had record high you know shipment of gpus and so on but then i was thinking about it and i was like really amd was not keeping shelves stocked pretty much at all they didn't have the same amount of product hitting shelves as nvidia did on the gpu side so obviously it must be somewhere else now, what they did note is that this was growth across all segments and the inclusion of the Z-Links revenue. So they did have that Z-Links partnership that came into play. And I think that that is pretty much where we are seeing that growth year over year. Uh, part of it at least, right? Because you would assume at this point that the GPU revenue is going down, but maybe it's not, right? It's hard to really see with AMD because they had those inflated MSRPs you really weren't seeing like RX 6600 rigs being built, even though R <clears throat> excuse me, even though RX 6600s were extremely efficient. It wasn't like you were seeing as many of those as the RTX 3070 rigs. And give me a second while I fix my throat because we got a frog in there, huh? It's probably this delicious coffee from Mr. BBT. It's not his coffee. He doesn't have branded coffee, but he does have a coffee cup. So make sure you guys go give him a follow. The OG. So let me know what you guys think, uh, specifically as it surrounds uh, AMD and their incredible growth year over year for the quarter. And do you think that will continue? Uh, do you think that they have enough outside products outside of gpus to combat what's happening now there's also another point that we have to bring up too and that is all of this distress in taiwan you know between with of course the visit from nancy pelosi and china basically claiming sovereignty over taiwan and the fact that taiwan still produces over 50 percent of the silicon for semiconductors so that does mean a lot of the manufacturing from AMD and, in, and NVIDIA and Intel still goes through Taiwan. And if you have a whole bunch of issues going on there from a, you know, a global stage perspective, I suppose, you could see shortages start to come back into the market. This was one thing that I did want to bring up too, because we had that video from Jay's Two Cents that was extremely odd, where he said, now is the time to buy GPUs. I don't know if he had any insider information, but everybody else within the YouTube tech community kind of was like, no, that doesn't make any sense. We have new GPUs coming. If you're looking at it and just reading the news and you're getting what is ever is fed to you from a PR perspective, right? You got the RTX 4000 series coming out. 
You got the RX 7000 series coming out. You have crypto mining dying off and people selling all of their rigs. And you basically have the perfect storm, especially with the merge in September for GPU prices to steeply decline. That's what you would expect. But it's kind of curious that Jay's two cents would be like, at this point, you should go out and buy GPUs because this will be the lowest that they'll ever be. This is the lowest the MSRPs will be on NVIDIA GPUs as well. I'm just curious if there's some sort of inside information that he has surrounding shortages for silicon coming up in the near future, especially as we start to see kind of all of this start to play out with Taiwan and China, et cetera. We know that, of course, we are starting to see foundries get built and semicon semiconductor plants being built here in the US, but most of those won't be done until end of 2023 on the Intel side and even later than that for TSMC, maybe 2025 and beyond. But there's definitely something going on on the global stage that is going to hinder some sort of production of silicon. So like I always say, I hodl silicon. I don't hodl cryptocurrency. And even when we have a big dip in the price of silicon, right, our GPUs, etc. It's still the safer bet because you never know really what's going to happen here uh, with production of it. That is a physical asset that produces revenue. And I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on it. That was just some stuff bouncing around in my head because it was very out of character. I felt like to see Jay's Two Cents release a video like that, especially when he's usually fully aware of like, well, all of the information that we're aware of with new GPU releases, etc. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.